Hello everyone, I am Veda Prabhu Basavarajappa, an early stage researcher in the Horizon 2020 Marie Curie ITN 5G Wireless, an antenna engineer at TTI Norte, Spain, and a PhD candidate at the University of Cantabria, Spain. I am presenting the paper on Millimeter Wave Multi-Beam Switching Antenna presented at the International Symposium of Wireless Communication Systems held on the 28th of August 2017 in Bologna, Italy. The co-authors of the paper are Beatrice Viria Exposito and Lorena Cabria, also from TTI Norte, Spain, and Jose Bastaricia from the University of Cantabria, Spain. Here is the outline of the presentation. First, I'll introduce the trends and requirements. Then I will take you through the prior work in this field and then introduce you to the system level overview of the design. Then introduce to you the millimeter wave antenna element design. Then share with you the multi beam switching operation analysis followed by the beam switching scheme excitation matrices that are used to excite the antenna beam states and then take you through the correlation coefficients of the different antenna beam states before concluding. Let's take a look at the recent trends. There has been an accelerated growth in the cellular data rate over the past five years in telecommunications. The Cisco Visual Networking Index VNI of 2017 says that the global mobile data traffic went up by 63% and the 4G connections represent a quarter of the mobile connections, that is almost 69% accountability of the mobile data traffic. The trends in 4G hint at an increasing demand for high data rates and quality of service which is an impetus for the 5G domain. The requirements. In order to achieve the high data rates, a key technology is the massive MIMO, the massive multiple input, multiple output system. It has a massive number of antennas, a very large number of antennas that result in high beam forming gains and therefore giving a better peak throughput. The antenna requirements that go into the design of such massive MIMO antennas revolve around three important factors. One is to achieve the high gain, to obtain a very high bandwidth, and to have a very small volume. All of these three factors are often interdependent and a trade-off has to be made between these factors. The prior work relating to the field of the massive MIMO antennas are shown here. Some of the prototypes that are pertaining to this field are uh, put together in this uh, slide. You can see on the top left corner a tilted beam antenna which is made of a waveguide and a printed antenna structure which gives a tilted beam in the elevation plane. This has a very high gain that comes out of the antenna structure. And then next to it is the turning torso antenna, which is a hexagonal shaped antenna structure, which is placed in the fashion of a turning torso so that it could cover all the 360 degree sectors in the coverage. Another antenna that you can see is the cross polarization discrimination ratio increased antenna, which increases the XPD because of the parasitic patches that surround the uh, excited dipoles. And then another antenna is the inkjet printed antenna that you can see on the center of the screen, on the bottom corner of the center of the screen. The antennas that are on to the extreme left bottom corner of the screen are the ones that are based on the patch, uh, microstrip patch technology and are excited by the substrate integrated waveguide technology. On the right side of the screen, you can see the massive MIMO antennas, the one on the, mm, the one on the 
extreme right uh, the ones on the extreme right are the argos uh, antenna which is uh, operating at 2.7 gigahertz and the lund uh, masimi lumami antenna from the lund university which operates also at 2.7 gigahertz and below that are shown antenna elements which are designed to operate in the range of 2.7 gigahertz in the in the microwave in the sub 6 gigahertz region with uh, very high gain The system level overview of the designed antenna, which is a millimeter wave Massey MIMO antenna system, is now discussed here. The three important factors are the choice of frequency, the choice of the antenna, and the choice of the antenna array. The frequency of 15 GHz was chosen as an ideal trade off between millimeter wave and Massey MIMO frequencies, also because there has been an increased interest recently in the 15 GHz band. For the choice of the antenna, the antenna had to be designed for the massive MIMO single RF and millimeter wave technologies. It was therefore thought and proposed that a single concept will cover the antennas designed for each of these three technologies. However, individual tailored antennas for each of these technologies is not excluded. And for the case of the choice of array, a massive MIMO prototype is planned to be designed which contains 64 antennas in an 8 cross 8 planar array structure. A single RF MIMO prototype is planned for with 9 antennas which is 3x3 3 3 antenna array and a millimeter wave prototype with 9 antennas which is 3x3 3 3 antenna array is planned. What you see here is a system level overview depicted by a Venn diagram of the entire system. Here you can see three circles of the Venn diagram, each depicting one of the key technologies, namely the massive MIMO, the single RF MIMO, and the millimeter wave beamforming. So at the intersection of these three sectors is what is the 5G antenna array. This is to depict the fact that the 5G antenna array will involve key factors which will serve each of the three technologies. What you see here now is a millimeter wave antenna element design. The design is a new high gain, high directional antenna element. It has a gain of 7.5 dBi and operates in the bandwidth of 13.5 to 15.5 gigahertz. It has a fractional bandwidth of 13.8% and has a size of a centimeter square across. Both the front view and the back view of the design are shown in the figure there. The black color is to signify the substrate and the yellow color is to signify the copper printed on top of it. So in the structural design that you see there, there is the, uh, the bottom part of the structure is where the SMA connector is fed, an edge, fed, edge SMA connector is fed. And this is connected to the reflector, which is printed again. And this is in turn connected also to the source, that is a dipole. And the dipole is then connected to a parasitic resonator through a gap, a capacitic gap. And this is in turn connected to square patches, which are in turn connected to the parasitic flaring angle resonators, which are placed in such a way so as to maximize the focus of the energy in the bore side direction. The radiation pattern is shown at 14 gigahertz. As you can see, it is a directional radiation pattern and it has a gain of 8 dBi in the simulations. And the surface current distribution at 14 gigahertz is also shown with very high con concentration of the current on the structure. In this figure, you can see the simulated return losses of the millimeter wave antenna element. You can see that the return losses are well below 10 dB for 13 GHz to the 15 GHz band, and therefore the antenna operates in this band. And also the simulated gain pattern 
is shown on the right. It has a gain of around 8 dBi in the bore site and with very low backlobe radiations. So here you can see the multi-beam switching operation analysis. I will take you through the different antenna excitation states and how the antenna is excited to operate the different multi-beam switching operation. Here on the left you can see the uh, antenna array which is a 3 by 3 antenna array of the millimeter wave antenna element. And on you can see that the green signifies an excitation of plus 1 and the red signifies an excitation of minus 1. The green button 1 is to say that the amplitude is 1 and the phase is 0 for the excitation and the red button is to say that the amplitude is 1 and the phase is 180 degree for the excitation. So when the excitation is made in such a way in this fashion that is all the antenna elements are fed with an equal amplitude and a phase of 0 degrees then you get a beam that is just like this. This is the classical bore side beam that is coming out of the screen towards you, projecting out towards you. So this beam is generated. Now when the excitation is made in such a way as this, that is you have two beams excited by 180 degrees and amplitude 1 on the top and two beams excited by 180 degrees and amplitude 0 on the bottom. On the four corners, you get a uh, beam which is of this fashion, which is basically oriented towards the uh, horizontal plane with two beams projecting out. The same switching beam operation analysis with a different kind of excitation like this will give you uh, a beam pattern which is in the vertical plane with the different blue lobes coming out of it in split plane vertically. And when the same excitation is done in such a fashion as shown on the left, the bottom left, you get a beam projection which is in the direction of the four directions north, south, east, west with a very high gain each simultaneously. What is to be pointed out in these uh, figures is that each of these uh, multi beam lobes are having a gain of around 12 to 30 individually as well. And then you can have a slanted beam in this fashion by exciting the vectors in such a way so as to excite a slanted vector um, rotation and uh, also in a different fashion so that you can get another slanted vector in the plus 45 and the minus 45 degree fashion. What you see here now is the multi beam switching operation analysis. All of these beams were put together in a single figure so as to be able to compare the different beam shapes that are obtained by this antenna element. On the right side you see the beam steering which is done in steps of 30 degrees. This is the linear antenna array which is having a phi element and each of them is being spaced by 0.6 lambda so as to avoid grating lobes. And when you apply a progressive phase shift at 30 degrees, the beam steering can be done as shown in the figure with the pointing losses uh, also accounted for in the figure. Now here you can see the beam switching scheme involving the excitation matrices. Uh, the antenna beam states are 6 in number and therefore there are 6 uh, excitation matrices from A to F and each of these excitation matrices as the name implies involves the elements of the matrix to be the excitation vectors. For example, the vector, the um, um, matrix A has all of its element entries filled by K to say that the amplitude is K and the phase is 0 and each of the elements is uniform amplitude and uniform phase. Similarly, the amplitude uh, and phases of different uh, uh, vector excitations are shown in B and C, D and E and F. What should be noted is that each of these matrices are related to each other and therefore by simple matrix operations one can switch from one matrices to the other other matrix. And therefore this can be used in FPGA techniques to obtain the beam switching schemes. The port numbers are plotted against the antenna beam states in the table on the right. K implies an amplitude of K and phase 0 and minus K implies an amplitude K and phase 180 degrees and 0 implies that no port is excited.
the correlation coefficient of the different antenna beam states is now discussed here. The correlation coefficient rho e between two antennas of an array is given by the formula shown in this slide, where uh, fi of theta phi is the radiation pattern with port i excited. So basically, this formula in an intuitive fashion is to show the amount of overlap between two antenna patterns with each other. The correlation coefficient ranges from 0 to 1. And for Massimo purposes, it is preferred to be less than 0.4. On the table on the right, you can see the calculated correlation coefficients of the different antenna beam states, which were shared with you earlier in these slides. And these are calculated using the formula shown here. It can see it can be seen that the correlation coefficients are well below 0.4, and therefore the antenna element is suitable for the use in Massimo antenna systems. So in order to conclude, uh, a high directivity element as a precursor to design of millimeter wave subarrays or massive arrays was presented and validated by full wave simulations. The antenna has a good return loss bandwidth of less than minus 10 dB over the operational band with a stable radiation pattern across the entire band. The antenna array patterns are realized through a novel beam switching scheme that casts multiple beams with high directivity. And the low values of correlation coefficients between the different antenna beam states aid in massive MIMO adaptation. Acknowledgement. This work is supported by the 5G wireless project that has received funding from the European Union's Horizon 2020 Research and Innovation Program under grant agreement number 641985. Thank you very much for listening to my presentation. Here is my contact and social media details. Thank you.